Okay guys, so for today's project, we're going to do a camera stand. So the idea is to have a stand that takes up a small footprint that you can roll around the shop or in whoever's case, maybe a studio if you do a different style of video. Um, really small space that you could easily adjust the height. Um, one differentiation that I want to make in this build is I want the articulating arm to be able to have the ability to flip and do overhead shots. So I'm trying to add a lot of weight to the base. What I've got here is six by sixes and four by sixes. I also have a wooden pine four by four. Now that we've got it all glued up, we can just apply the clamps and give it some time for that to set. We have to create the aperture to which the articulating arm will connect to the post and be able to slide up and down. So for that material, I'm going to use one by six because it's got a lot of space to grab the post. So once you have one side of this thing with the articulating arm and your camera hanging off of it, it's going to, gravity is going to make it want to tilt and bite and bite down into the post once it's got weight applied to it. So I think this is going to be a good material. We just want to make it just a hair bigger than the post and we're just going to create a, a basic little box. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Now let's do a little rough fitting. And that's what we're going for. So now we've got our apparatus that can slide up and down. So now we have to be able to, to put some sort of stop on it to get it at the height range that we want to set it there and then something that we're going to be able to easily move so we can do this really fast. So I found, dug around my shop, found a little turn knob which you can pick these guys up at Lowe's or Home Depot really cheap and I'm just going to drill a hole a little bit smaller. <laughs> And the size of the thread on here and thread it in. Now our set screw is sticking into the post and that's securing this. We can loosen it that quick and now we can slide up and down again. So now we'll go ahead and make the arms for the boom. So now we're going to need to cut the pieces that the arms will connect to. Now we'll need to rip four small pieces. Okay, so basically what we want to do is create what is going to hold our articulating arm to the box that's going to slide vertically on the post. So my thought is to kind of create a wooden hinge. So we're going to use these couple of little blocks and then we'll slide a bolt. We'll slide a bolt all the way through and then when this bolt, this nut is tightened on the bolt, it's going to stop this from swinging and that'll allow us to have a full swing on our boom for our articulating arm to move around and get a lot of really cool shots. So initially I thought about using mechanical fasteners using screws from the opposing side, but I don't think that's going to give it enough structural stability over time with all the weight of the arm hanging off. So the next best option I believe is to use dowels. So you can pick up a little doweling jig like this at Harbor Freight, pretty cheap, a couple bucks. 
or you could just make one and there's several videos out there for guys who make their own. It's not really difficult. Basically what it consists of is a drill bit that's the same size as the dowel and then a collar so that you can set the depth of how far you want to drill into your piece and a little allen key to tighten it down. So the general rule of thumb is you, you usually want to go about half of the depth of your dowel. So you can just eyeball that or if you're in a situation where that measurement is crucial then you can break out your ruler and find out exactly what half is. But in this application this measurement is not exactly going to be crucial so what we'll do is we'll drill the holes on the boards that we're connecting to the main collar and then we'll use these little divots that will go into the hole line it up and you tap it and this little guy will fit into that hole and you can see that cone shape on the top and when you tap it with a hammer that's going to leave you your center point for your drill bit on the opposing board that you're attaching with the dowels now we want to go ahead and put our dowels in there and we're going to do a little dry fit just to make sure so those are in the blocks put them into the sleeve and then we're going to see how well this fits so we want that fit to be pretty snug so when the bolt that's coming through here when this is tightened it applies a clamping force so that it won't swing freely now we want to go ahead and find the center point to where we want to go ahead and find the center point to where it's the center of this board and the center of this board as well so it's pretty simple with these because these boards are two inches wide so you measure down an inch from here, you measure in an inch from here, and you get your center point. Now, when we get ready to part, start putting our screws and bolts in, this joint can be screwed so it can flow freely, and the only one we're going to have to actually put a lever on are the bottom ones to control our up and down. So let's go ahead and drill those center holes now. So you could buy knobs at a hardware store similar to this, um, but these little knobs typically tend to run you about two or three bucks a piece. So I picked up a large pack of T-nuts, which these are usually easily available. I got these at a local box store. Um, they're the same size, obviously, as the bolts that I'm going to use. These are 5 sixteenths. And rather than paying three bucks a piece for the knobs, I'm just going to make an assortment of knobs and I got a 25 pack of T-nuts for six bucks. And there you go. I just made five handles for less than a dollar. All right, so while our knobs are drying, we can turn our attention back to the base for a bit. Now, that's serving its purpose, but that's pretty ugly. So, I think what we're going to do is, a, is we're going to laminate it with a little bit of three-quarter plywood. So that's going to give us a couple of things. That's going to add more weight because the three-quarter is quite heavy. And then it's going to encase the base because although we're not building a piano, this thing is going to be in my shop and I don't want it to be just sticking out like a sore thumb and be incredibly ugly. So to fix it to the top, we can put a pretty liberal amount of glue on there. Okay. And then we'll use just some 18 gauge 2 inch brad nails to hold it into place. But you want to take care and make sure you do not add any mechanical fasteners to the middle. Just stay to the extremities and you'll see why in a little while.
so now we can turn our attention to the method in which we will connect the post, the 4x4, into the base. So I think the best thing to do, what's going to give us the most sturdy overall appeal, is we're going to go ahead and cut a recess out of the middle of this base. And that's where earlier I said you want to make sure you don't have any mechanical fasteners, any metal in the middle, because we're going to use a bit. We've got a half inch by one and a half inch bit that will allow us to get an inch and a half deep down into the recess to inset the post so it will have a good stable base. So now that we've gotten our hole, the, the bulk of the material is hogged out of the hole. We're about two inches deep that we've gotten with our bit. So the downside to making a square hole with a round bit, every time you do it is going to be, you're going to leave rounded edges. So that now that we've gotten it pretty dialed in really close to where we want it, we want to finish this process up with a chisel. Now after a little bit of chisel work, we've got a good fit. We've got our post in there. So now we can go ahead and flip it over and add the casters. Also like to make sure I spray these casters the ball bearings with a little bit of Teflon lube so it goes on wet but then it it finishes dry so now what we're gonna do is go ahead and apply a liberal amount of glue inside this mortise all right time to set the post in and add some 45 degree braces just to give it a little more support and that'll also help it to stay level through the drying process. So let's just make sure that it's level and that looks pretty good. All right guys, so there it is. We got it all finished. Uh, we've got a credible range of motion and again, the ability to grab an overhead shot so we can see what we're working on our workbench. As woodworking evolves um, in the modern times, a lot of guys that didn't anticipate it, including me, have to learn videography, photography, and editing, as well as learning the woodworking trade so they can share and get their work out there. Hopefully this is a simple, relatively quick project that you can share with your friends to achieve the same results and be able to get some more flexible shots instead of trying to set up a tripod everywhere. Um, if you like this video, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're notified whenever we release new videos and share the video with your friends. Thanks for watching. You guys have a good day.